Invoicing is an important part of every business. Automating invoicing help businesses save time and money. Fortunately, there are many online services that can automate this process. They give you a bunch of templates to choose from. But things can get tricky if you have complex pricing rules. That's when businesses go back to Excel and create invoice templates with whatever pricing rules they need. Here is an example. This is a relatively simple one. We have quantity and description sections. Unit prices are calculated from uh, a lookup table. Here is our pricing list. We also have other parameters you can configure like discount rates and sales tax. As you enter your order, subtotals are calculated. Discount rate is pulled from the discount table using view lookup formulas. Then sales tax and total due is calculated. As I said earlier, this is a relatively simple pricing model. You can make it as complex as you need. For example, you can introduce customer-based discount logic or location-based sales tax. This is all a matter of adding a few tables and formulas in Excel. Now let's turn this invoice into a web application. Before we do that, we have to make sure all cells that we will use in the application is named in Excel. These names are crucial in creating the application. Now, what I mean by names is, let's take this cell, for example, is the company name. We have a name called BT name. Street address, BT street. City, phone number, these are all names. For the entire grid, we have a name called grid. For calculated fields, like subtotal, we call the cell subtotal. We call the cell discount rate, discount total, etc. To turn this Excel spreadsheet into a web application, first log into your spreadsheet web account, then Hit create a new application, select designer, and drag and drop your spreadsheet file. Select a group and go to application. The first thing we're going to do is to design our user interface. Hit user interface button. Now this is our designer interface. Uh, in the design interface, you can drag and drop any input control and associate that control with one of the name ranges in the Excel workbook. Remember, I mentioned earlier that name ranges in the Excel workbook is very important, and this is why. I can do that one by one, or Spreadsheet Web has an ability to select a worksheet and import all of the name ranges in that worksheet all at once. The next is to put them in order. Now, in order to do that, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add a section. I will divide it into two columns. The first column, I'm going to add a label, and this is where I'm going to enter the company information. I am going to Paste it here, select a header, and submit. Now on the right hand side, I will also add a label. Call this invoice. And Select header two and submit. On the right hand side, I will also add two fields. One is date, the other is invoice ID. 
Uh, as you can see, that date in the Excel workbook was a date formatted cell. Now, Spreadsheet Web will automatically detect it as a date format and associate it with a calendar input. Um, I can change the labels. I will change this to invoice number. And I will leave this, the other one as is. Next, I will add another section here. Again, create a, a two column. And here I will add the company name, bill to and ship to sections. Add a label, call it bill to. I can make this, let's say, make it header three, submit and add my BT name, BT street, city, email, and phone. Uh, I can do the same thing on the right-hand side, and I will do that quickly. Next, I'm going to design the part of uh, our interface where uh, the, uh, the units uh, are entered. Remember, that part was a table uh, in the Excel workbook that we called it grid as a name range. Now, in Spreadsheet Web Interface, that section was de detected and it is turned into a table. Now, I can simply go in and uh, redesign it if I want to, but as you can see, if the labels uh, were automatically detected. The first column is detected as quantity. The mass type is integer. The second column is detected as description. Third column is unit price, and the fourth column is the total. The final part of our interface is uh, inserting the calculated fields. For that, I'm going to add a new section. Select two column layouts. On the right hand side, I'm going to add the label section. Edit content. Now, because I'm going to add uh, things like subtotal, discount rate, discount total, etc. It's going to be easier to add a table. We have six rows and two columns. The first one is subtotal. And here, the way to add a calculated field, a calculated cell, is again through the uh, name ranges. Now, two curly parentheses will give you all the options available. Remember, this one is going to be subtotal. So I can simply select subtotal here. I can add a formula, uh, a format here. And that's it. I'll do the same thing for others, but I will fast forward it.
The final step in the user interface design is to add a new button, add a button actually, and associate this button with save action. And that's pretty much it. Now we can uh, preview the user interface by simply going to the interface and hit preview. This is how the web application will look. Because I would like to store each invoice uh, in the system, uh, I need to add a database table. Adding a database table is very easy in uh, Designer. All you need to do is to go to the database tab and add a new database table. In the database table, I can add each uh, column one by one, or I can click on this add used columns and uh, the system will add all of the input fields uh, all at once. I'll just click on add used columns. Essentially, it will walk, uh, walk me through each input and ask me to give it a confirmation or change the inputs like uh, data type for that column, column name, or the column size. So I simply go through one by one. If I'm happy with the default selections, hit next. Hit next. If I want to change anything there, I can simply go in and make the change. Now all of the input fields are added to the system. All inputs but one has been added. The exception is the table portion of uh, the interface. Uh, it, remember in the invoice document we have uh, individual items uh, in a table structure. Uh, Spreadsheet Web has an ability to add that section, that table section, as a secondary table. So let me show you how to do that. Go back to the databases, add a new table, and I'm going to call this items. And you see that there are two options. Uh, additional table can be created as one-to-one -one table or one-to-many table. This particular case, we have a one-to-many table because for a given invoice, we have we can have multiple entries, multiple item entries. So that's why I'm going to choose one-to-many and hit create database. Now it's going to ask me to select the range. Now which range the, this one to many uh, is coming from? It's grid. Does it have a header information? Yes. Next. Now as you can see, now it detects all the columns in that table. The first column is quantity column. I want to make sure that quantity is integer. Hit next. Description, I'll leave it as string. Unit price, I would like to make sure that it is uh, an integer field. Actually, why don't I change it to decimal? And I'll leave it, everything as default. Total, I also want to make it a decimal. And finish. So now I have the secondary table. Our application is ready. There's one additional optional uh, module that I can add, which is style sheet. Basically what style sheet will do, it, it will change the look and feel uh, of the application. Uh, let me add a style sheet just to demonstrate the functionality. Add a style sheet. We have a, a library of style sheets that you can choose from. I'm just going to pick uh, one of them from the list, call it style. But you can also create your own uh, style sheet or uh, modify an existing style sheet. Hit update. And now I can go to preview and see how the application will look like.
This is the look and feel of the application. As you can see, uh, all the inputs are there. We have the grid functionality there. We have the calculated fields. And finally, we have the submit button. Remember, this is also a responsive application. If you change the width, it will respond accordingly. The application is ready to use. The very last step is to publish it. Go to the menu, hit publish, confirm, and the application is published for everyone to use. Anyone who has access to the control panel can simply go to uh, the Applications tab, find the application, click on the application. Application is loaded. can simply go and enter the information. Let's say I'm going to pick today's date. Uh, one, one, two, three. Main Street, skip the rest. I'm just going to enter some quantity. Uh, all right, I'll select, let's say, item three. You see the uh, unit prices are automatically kicking in and calculating. I'll put another item on the list, say, item seven. Uh, calculations are done, subtotals are being calculated, discount rates and everything. And when I'm done, I just need to uh, give it an invoice number also. 2007, 11, 10. And hit submit. The invoice is saved. How to get to the invoices. Close this. Refresh this page. So we now have this uh, icon that uh, that I can access uh, all the saved records through. And click on this data icon and see the uh, saved record in the system. So this is the invoice that, that I just saved a few minutes ago. Uh, the invoice number, customer name, and the invoice amount. Uh, there's also some additional fields, uh, the system fields. So if I want to load it Again, all I need to do is to click on this edit icon. The invoice along with the, with the data uh, will be loaded. Uh, if I'm allowed to, I can make some changes, adjustments, and save it back into the system. Each invoice that is saved would appear here on this list. Uh, in addition to that, the system can be configured that each user can save and view their own invoices. Uh, you can, they can be sales associate. You can also configure other users like sales manager, uh, who can see the invoices submitted by other users uh, like sales associates under that particular manager. So there are all these uh, functionality uh, built into the control panel, and any application can be configured uh, to do that. This concludes my demonstration. In this video, I was able to show you how you can turn a custom invoice template into a web application without any program. Thanks for watching. Please feel free to visit our website and sign up for a free trial.